If all goes well, this will be our last video, the final video in this series. But you know what they say, all good things must come to an end. What we're going to do here is take some voltage readings. Uh, folks had requested it, so we know the radio's playing well and everything, but so what? We'll still go ahead and take some voltage readings and show folks how to do it. Now, how do you go about it? What's the right approach? The right approach is to go to your documentation. Now, on your documentation, uh, if, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have it, uh, most radios uh, will have documentation, which brings me to the point, you know, it's not a good idea to buy a radio without first checking to see if documentation is available, without first checking to see if parts are available. Uh, sometimes there are radios out there, there are no schematics, uh, no alignment procedures, no anything. Uh, if you want a challenge, fine. Knock yourself out and go ahead and buy it and see what you can do with it. If, if, you're, if, if you're not certain that you want that challenge, I'm one of those guys that do, hey, I don't want that challenge. I want documentation on radio. Uh, I usually research a radio to find out what parts are available, what uh, rubber grommets are, are the uh, bushings, uh, all kinds of things, you know, are they available. And uh, then, if I can find, you know, dial scales, all sorts of things, you know, uh, uh, sometimes they'll be missing knobs. I'll find out no uh, reproduction knobs are available. I like to have things available before buying a radio and beginning it, uh, the restoration and uh, repair and restoration. So that's my advice to you, but, you know, I'm kind of a chicken in that arena. You know, you guys uh, do what you wish. Anyway, on this Philco service bulletin we have here, it says tube socket voltages measured to ground, and then it gives the, volt the uh, tubes right here, okay? And most of your documentation will have that. They'll tell you at what point, on what tube, and what voltage you should get. Now, that's a little difficult to read, so I went ahead and blew it up, of course. This is what it looks like. All right, what we have is your 78 tube, 6A7 tube, 78, 75, and 42. And the tube point, this would be the plate, P for plate, SG for screen get, grid, and the K for the cathode, of course. And they even give a voltage here on the 6A7 for grid number 3 and 5, which in this case would be 175 volts DC. So what we're going to do is uh, measure each of these uh, pins and or points, measuring uh, voltage points on each of these tubes. But before we do, we need to find out, you know, what tube is that? I, I mean, what pin is that? I can't remember. So what I'm going to do here is I print it off. Uh, off of Nostalgia Air uh, under uh, tubes. You can find your tube and it tells you what your pins are. You recall that way back when we did this. And uh, according to, let's just do a little matchup here. It says uh, tube, let's look at the 78. The 78 is the first tube, point P, which is the plate, which is 245 volts. Now the plate will be pin 2. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and write pin 2 down there. Nice big letter. I'm going to circle it. I'm going to do that for each one of these. That way when I'm up, up underneath the chassis there and I'm, I've got my little probe and I'm sticking around in there, I don't want to have to keep referring back to the drawing to figure out what pin is what. It'll all be right there in front of me. So let me go ahead and finish marking each of these. Okay, everything has been marked and highlighted. Now let's take a look at this uh, 6A7 right here. Down here it said on the 6A7 that grids 3 and 5 equal 175 volts. Now that turns out to be pin 3, and here's why. Pin 3, you'll see, is grid 3 and grid 5. And they come down there, and there's one grid, and there's the other grid right there. Two grids connected to the same point. Okay, the last thing we need to do before we start crawling under the chassis and poking here and there is we read the bottom part. We're pretty much done with all this. Let me get this out of our way. And we're pretty much done with this uh, service and bulletin right now, this kind of thing. And down here at the bottom it says that they used the Philco Type 025 circuit tester when they did these voltage checks. God, I just threw five of those out last week. I can't believe it. I'm going to have to use my uh, digital multimeter now. 
Anyway, it says you apply the test probes to the underside of chassis. Now, that's nice to know too. And the volume control needs to be at maximum. The dial has to be set to 55. And the wave band switch counterclockwise all the way. And then you use figure one for the test points, which was this right here. It's just a drawing that shows you which tube is which and where it's laid out in the chassis. But we don't need that because ours is already marked. And we already have the pins marked up here. And then it says you're supposed to have a line voltage of 115 volts. Now, we're going to have, I think, a line voltage of a little less than 115. And I'll tell you why. Uh, you'll recall if you've been following this... Uh, let me get this out of the way here. If you'll recall, if you followed along with this restoration, you'll remember that I took uh, one of these little power resistors. It was a 20 ohm, 25 water, and I stuck it in the line right there in the primer in the uh, in the uh, primary of the transformer line. I stuck it right in there like that to cut down on the voltage, and I also put a fuse behind it. So what we're going to have to do is measure. On each, I want to measure on each side of that to show you how that's done. Now that resistor, we'll go ahead and just show it in here like this. There's the resistor, and I put a fuse right here like this. So there's our fuse. There's our fuse, and there's our resistor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the first probe on this side of the uh, power line, and I'll test on this side of the resistor and see what voltage we get. And that'll be the wall voltage coming out of the socket. Then we'll move up, we'll leave this one where it's at, and we'll move up to this side of the resistor and find out how much uh, voltage we have then. Again, this will be AC since this is coming out of the wall and it is the primary. So we'll test on both sides of the resistor and see just how much voltage uh, the resistor has eliminated. I think it's probably going to be a little less than 115, hopefully. Okay, things are pretty well set up. I've got the negative lead of my multimeter connected to one this black line right here that comes out of the power cord. The other line comes out of the power cord here and goes down to the fuse. So let's touch the fuse and find out how much uh, voltage we got coming in that line? Here we go. Let me see if I can get my probe down to it. There we go. Let's watch our meter. Oops. Hundred twenty-two point eight. That's the voltage we got coming in. Well, hundred twenty-two point nine. Then have it your way. Now we're going to go on the other side of the resistor, which will be up in there. It comes into the resistor right there. We're going to test the other side of the resistor, which, which uh, will go over to the power switch. We'll connect there and see what kind of reading we get then. All right, just to make sure you understand what we're doing, I've got the negative connector right here, and I'm now going to put the uh, positive lead, here's the switch, I'm going to connect it to this side of the switch right here, which will be after the resistor. Alright, I went ahead and connected an alligator wire to that one side of that power switch, and connected it to my probe so I don't have to reach up in there and probe around through all that stuff. And I still have my negative lead connected over here where it was originally. And we have 123.1. Ho oh, ho! That's more than what we had before the resistor. Now how can that be? Well, I'll tell you. The power switch isn't on. We turn the power switch on the radio and watch what happens. There she drops down. Alright, she's down to 117. I was kind of hoping it would be a little lower than that. It is a little lower. There we go. Now we're doing okay. Now we're doing better. 114.9. 114.7, whatever. It's hovering around in there. That's about what I wanted, okay? So I, I actually got about a 7-volt drop using that resistor. 
that old power transformer right there going to be a lot happier now. Cool, huh? All right, before we get into the tubes and check those pins, I thought I'd go ahead and check the secondary of the power transformer for voltage. You'll remember, uh, in, in back when I rewired the power transformer back in and I put new wires on, I made the center tap orange. I don't know if you, some of you might remember that. Let me go ahead and finish getting this on there. Man, I'll tell you, it's hard doing this stuff one-handed. <laughs> okay. I made it orange so it would be easy to follow, or easy to find. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect the negative lead of the multimeter right here to the uh, center tap. And then I'm going to take the positive lead and connect it right here to pin 3. And then I'm going to take the positive lead and move, move it over here to pin 2. So what we're going to be doing is checking the voltage from here to the plate on the 82. And when I move it over to uh, the positive lead over to pin 2, we're going to be checking the voltage this way to the plate, pin 2. So let's do that. Alright, I've got the uh, negative lead right here connected to the orange wire, which is our center tap. And I will now take my positive probe and touch it to pin 2, which would be that one right there. And pin 3, which would be that one right there. And we'll see what kind of readings we get over here. We are on the AC scale. So let me go ahead and touch this one first and see what happens. Three hundred and sixty-eight volts. All right. Now let's touch the other pin. Now these are the two small pins. Okay. We'll touch this one. We got three sixty-eight in the first and three sixty. My goodness, 368 on the second. Wow, that's that's kind of interesting. How about that? Identical readings. <laughs> well, if we had 368 on one plate and 368 on the other, it stands the readings, and you know, we should be reading 736 or thereabouts across the entire uh, secondary of the power transformer, which would be from pin 2 all the way around, all the way through, all the way up to pin 3. We should get somewhere around 736. Alright, I've got one pin already connected. The negative is connected to pin uh, 3. Let's touch, let me get this multimeter in a little better place where we can see it easier. All right, now let's go ahead and touch it and see how close we get to 736. I don't believe it. 735, 736. Bingo! Oop, now it's going to drop down a little bit. Don't ask me why. Tube conduction, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, that's pretty good. 7.36. Well, I can already see this is going to take more than one video to do because there's some information I really do want to pass on to those who are just starting out or have a radio and would like to start working on it. And before we get to the tube pin readings, let's take a look at the schematic. When you look at a schematic, you're looking at the bottom of the radio. Okay, schematic, bottom of the radio. Now, now this is not a hard and fast rule. Uh, I think it was a Spartan I worked on one time. The tube pins were numbered backward, I mean were connected backward from what showed on the schematic. So I started asking a few questions uh, of some people. And they said, yeah, once in a while you run into a radio where the tube sockets are numbered as if you're looking at them from the top of the chassis. So keep that in mind. 